If you root for the Mets and were born in 1980 or later, there's a really good chance Friday was the happiest day you've ever experienced as a baseball fan. There is also a distinct possibility Friday was the happiest day of fandom ever for Mets fans old enough to remember the euphoric relief of the 1986 championship, or even the unexpected eyes-wide-open joy yielded by the franchise-defining 1969 title. That's how deep the contempt within the fanbase runs for the Wilpon family, and how ecstatic fans are to see former minority owner Steve Cohen become baseball's richest owner after his purchase of the Mets for a tidy $2. $4 billion was approved Friday afternoon. No one knows how Cohen will operate the team or the degree to which he will be a hands-on owner, and to be sure, nobody spends $2. $4 billion to buy a baseball team with the idea of getting out of the way. But almost anything Cohen does will yield improved fortunes for the Mets, who won just one World Series game under the Wilpons and posted a winning record just three times since 2009. The only other teams with as few or fewer winning seasons in that span are the White Sox, Padres and Marlins, all of whom made the playoffs this year while the Mets finished in last place at 26-34. In a statement issued Friday afternoon, Cohen expressed hope the deal could become official in time to jump into the free agent market. No longer will the Mets spend the winter ignoring the best and highest paid players while focusing all their efforts on comparatively ordinary players and rehab or reclamation projects who can be signed to bargain contracts. Under Cohen, the Mets will surely be run with a robust budget, long-term vision and degree of autonomy for the baseball operations department lacked by the Wilpons, whose tenure was defined by penny-pinching, short-sightedness and suffocating, input, from ownership. Mets fans are probably also ecstatic that there's a really good chance the last day of the Wilpons ownership was also their worst one. Not even $2. 4 billion can buy happiness, even if that represents a return of roughly $2. 39 billion on the original investment. This is not intended to elicit sympathy for the Wilpons, who professed the Mets were a public trust but failed to earn or deserve the public's trust despite being gifted, by the good fortune of Fred Wilpons' friendship with Bud Selig, far too many opportunities to prove worthy of owning a big market baseball team. By any reasonable standard, their ownership of the Mets should have ended shortly after December 2008, when the Wilpons learned they'd lost more than half a billion dollars in Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme. Fred Wilpon swore he had no idea what Madoff was doing with his money, which is almost more alarming than the more sinister explanation.